from around the globe. It's theCUBE with digital coverage of AWS reInvent Executive Summit 2020. Sponsored by Accenture and AWS. Welcome everyone to theCUBE's coverage of Accenture Executive Summit here at AWS reInvent. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. For this segment, we have two guests. First, we have Helen Davis. She is the Senior Director, Cloud Platform Services, Assistant Director for IT and Digital for the West Midlands Police. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Helen. And we also have Matthew Pound. He is Accenture Health and Public Service Associate Director and West Midlands Police Account Lead. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Matthew. Thank you for having us. So we are going to be talking about delivering data-driven insights to the West Midlands Police Force. Helen, I want to start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about the West Midlands Police Force? How big is the force? And, and also what were some of the challenges that you were grappling with prior to this initiative? Yes, certainly. So West Midlands Police is the second largest police force in the UK, outside of the Metropolitan Police in London. Um, we have in excess of um, 11,000 people work at West Midlands Police, serving communities um, through across um, the Midlands region. So geographically, we're quite a big area as well, as well as um, being population um, density, having that as a, at a high level. Um, so. The reason we sort of embarked on the data-driven insights platform, and which was a huge change for us, was for a number of reasons. Um, namely, we had a lot of disparate data, um, which was spread across a range of legacy systems that were many, many years old, um, with some duplication of um, what was being captured, and no single view for officers or um, support staff. Um, some of the access was limited. You had to be in, a, in an actual police building on a desktop computer to access it. Um, other information could only reach officers on the front line through a telephone call back to one of our um, enabling services where they would do a manual checkup and look at um, the information, then call the officers back um, and tell them what they needed to know. So it was a very long, laborious um, process and not very efficient. Um, and we certainly weren't exploiting the data that we had in a very productive way. So it sounds like, I mean, as you're describing, an, an old clunky system that needed a technological uh, reimagination. So what was the main motivation for, for, doing, for making this shift? It was really um, about making us more efficient and more effective in, in how, we do, how we do business. So, um, you know, certainly as, a, as an IT leader and some of my operational colleagues, we recognise the benefits um, that data analytics could bring in a, in a policing environment, not something that was um, really done in the UK at the time. You know, we have a lot of data, so we're very data rich in, in the information that we have, but we needed to turn it into information that was actionable. So that's where we started looking for um, technology partners and um, suppliers to help us and sort of help us really with what's the art of the possible. You know, this hasn't been done before. So what could we do in this space that's appropriate for policing? Helen, I love that idea. What is the art of the possible? Can you tell us a little bit about why you chose AWS? I think really, you know, as, as with all things, um, when we're procuring a partner in, in the public sector, there, you know, there are many rules and regulations, uh, quite rightly, as you would expect there to be, because we're spending public money. So we have to be very, very careful. And um, it's, it's a long process and we have to be open to public scrutiny. So um, we sort of looked at everything, everything that was available as part of that process, but we recognize the benefits that cloud would provide in this space because you know, without moving to a cloud environment, we would literally be replacing something that was legacy with something that was a bit more modern. Um, that's not what we wanted to do. Our ambition was far greater than that. So I think um, in terms of AWS, really, it was around scalability, interoperability, you know, disaster, things like the disaster recovery service, the fact that we can scale up and down quickly, we call it dialing up and dialing back. Um, you know, it's it's page go. So the, it just sort of ticked all the boxes for us. And then we went through the full procurement process. Fortunately, um, it came out on top for us. So we were, we were able to move forward, but it just sort of had 
everything that we were looking for in that space. Matthew, I want to bring you into the conversation a little bit here. How are you working with what, with with the West Midlands Police, sorry, and helping them implement this cloud first journey? Yeah, so I guess um, our journey with West Midlands Police started um, over five years ago now. So um, we set up a partnership with the force and wanted to operate in a way that was very different to a traditional supplier relationship. Um, so through that, the Data Driven Insights program is, is one of many that we've been working with West Mids on um, over the last five years. Um, as Helen said already, um, cloud gave a number of uh, advantages certainly from a big data perspective and the things that that enabled us to do. Um, and from an extension perspective, that allowed us to bring in a number of the different teams that we have, so cloud teams, security teams, um, interactive from a design perspective, as well as the more traditional services that people would associate with the country. I mean, so much of this is about embracing comprehensive change to experiment and innovate and try different things. Matthew, how, how do you help uh, an, an entity like West Midlands Police think differently when they, there are these uh, ways of doing things that people are used to. How do you help them think about what is the art of the possible, as Helen said? So there's a few things to that. You know, what, what's been critical is trying to co-create solutions together. You know, there's no point just turning up with um, what we think is the right answer, trying to um, collectively work through um, the issues that the force are seeing and the outcomes they're looking to achieve rather than simply focusing on a long list of requirements I think was critical. And then being really open to working together to create the right solution, um, rather than just you know trying to pick something off the shelf that maybe doesn't fit the force's requirements in the way that it should do. Right, it's not always a one size fits all. Absolutely not. You know, what, what was critical is making sure that we're creating something that met the force's needs, um, in terms of the outcomes they're looking to achieve, the financial envelopes that were available, um, and how we can deliver those in a uh, iterative, agile way, um, rather than spending years and years um, working towards an outcome um, that has gone out of date before you even get there. So Helen, how, how are things different? What kinds of business functions and processes have been reimagined in, in light of this change and this shift? It's, it's actually unrecognisable now um, in certain areas of the business as it was before. So just to, to give you a little bit of, of context, when we um, started working with Accenture and AWS on the Data Driven Insights programme, it was very much around providing um, what was called locally a WYSI tool for our intelligence analysts to interrogate data, look at data, you know, decide whether they could do anything predictive with it. And it was very much sort of a back office function to sort of tidy things up for us and make us a bit better in that in that area or a lot better in that area. And it was rolled out to a number of offices, a small number on the front line. Um, and really it was um, in line with the mobility strategy that we had where offices were getting new smartphones for the first time um, to do sort of a lot of things on, on um, policing apps and things like that to again to avoid them having to keep driving back to police stations etc and the pilot was so successful every officer now has access to this data um, on their mobile devices so it literally went from a handful of people in an office somewhere using it to do sort of clever whiz bang things to um, every officer in the force being able to access that level of data at their fingertips, literally. So what they would have to have done before is if they needed to check an address or check details of an individual, um, just as one example, they would either have to, in many cases, go back to a police station to look it up themselves on a desktop computer, or they would have to make a call back to um, a centralised function and speak to an operator relay the questions, either wait for the answer or wait for a callback with the answer when those people are doing the data interrogation manually. So the biggest change for us is the self-service nature of the data we now have available. So officers can do it themselves on their phone, wherever they might be. So the efficiency savings um, from that point of view are immense. And I think just parallel to that is the quality of our data because we had a lot of data but just because you've got a lot of data and a lot of information doesn't mean it's big data and it's valuable necessarily. Um, so again, it was having the single source of truth 
as we, as we call it. So you know that when you, you are completing those say, searches and getting the responses back, that it is the most accurate information we hold. And also you're getting it back within minutes as opposed to, you know, half an hour, an hour or a drive back to a station. So it's making officers more efficient and it's also making them safer. The more efficient they are, the more time they have to spend um, out with the public doing what they, you know, we all should be doing. And have you seen that kind of return on investment? Because what you were just describing with all the steps that would needed to be taken in the, prior to this to verify an address, say, and those are precious seconds when someone's life is on the line in, in sort of in the course of everyday police work. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's difficult to put a price on it. It's difficult to quantify, um, but all the, you know, the minutes here and there certainly add up to a significant amount of efficiency savings. And we've certainly been able to demonstrate that officers are spending less time at police stations as a result and more time out on the front line. Also, they're safer because they can get information about what may or may not be at an address, what may or may not have occurred in an area before very, very quickly without having to wait. Matthew, I want to hear your observations of working so closely with this West Midlands police. Have you noticed anything about changes in its culture, in its operating model, in how police officers interact with one another? Have you seen any changes since this technology change? I think what's um, unique about the West Midlands police is the buy-in from the top. You know, from the chief and his exec team and, and Helen as the leader from an IT perspective. Um, the entire force is brought into what is a significant change program, uh, and that trickles through um, everyone in the organisation. Um, change is difficult, um, and there's uh, an awful lot of time effort that's been put into both the technical delivery and the business change and adoption aspects around each of the projects. Um, but you can see the step change that it's making in each aspect of the, the organisation. Uh, and where that's putting West Midlands Police as a leader in um, both technology and policing in the UK and I think globally. And this is a question for both of you, because Matthew, as you said, change is difficult. And there is always a certain intransigence in workplaces about this is just the way we've always done things and we're used to this and, and don't try us to get us, don't try to get us to do anything new here. It works. How do you get the buy-in that you need to, to, to do this kind of digital transformation? I think it it would be wrong to say it was easy. Um, and we also have to bear in mind that this was one program in a five-year program. So there was a lot of change going on, um, both internally for some of our back office functions as well as front uh, frontline officers. So with DDI in particular, I think that the step change occurred when people could see what it could do for them. You know, we had lots of, of workshops and seminars where we all talk about, you know, it's big data and it's going to be great and it's data analytics and it's transformational, you know, and quite rightly, people that are very busy doing a day job that not necessarily aren't technologists in the main and, you know, aren't particularly interested, quite rightly so, in what we, we are and not doing with the cloud, you know, and it was like, yeah, OK, it's one more thing. And then when they started to see it on their, on their phones and what teams could do, that's when it started to sell itself. And I think that's when we started to see, you know, to see the step change, you know, and, and if we if we have any issues now, it's literally, you know, our help desks in meltdown because everyone's like, well, we can't manage without this anymore. And I think that speaks for itself. So it doesn't happen overnight. It's sort of incremental changes. And then that's the step change in attitude. And when they see it working and they see the benefits, they want to use it more. And that's how it's become fundamental um, to our policing by itself, really, without much selling. Matthew, Helen just made a compelling case for how to get buy-in. Have you discovered any other best practices when you are trying to get everyone on board for this kind of thing? So we've, um, we've used a lot of the traditional techniques, things around comms and engagement. We've also used things like um, a 30-day challenge and nudge theory around how can we gradually encourage people to use things. Um, I think there's a point with all of this around how do we just keep it simple and keep it user centric from an end user perspective. I think DDI is a great example of where the, the technology is incredibly complex. The solution itself is um, you know, extremely large and um, has been you know, very difficult to um, get delivered. But at the heart of it is a very simple front end for the user to encourage it and take that complexity away from them. 
Uh, I think that's been critical through the whole piece of DDI. One final word from Helen. I want to hear, where do you go from here? What is the long-term vision? I know that this has made productivity um, productivity savings equivalent to 154 full-time officers. Uh, what's next? I think really it's around um, exploiting what we've got. Um, and I use the phrase quite a lot, dialing it up, which... Um, drives my technical architects crazy, but um, because it's apparently not that simple. But, um, you know, we've we've been through significant change in the last five years, and we are still continuing to bed all of those changes into everyday um, operational policing. But what we need to see now is we need to exploit and build on the investments that that we've made. Um, In terms of data and cloud specifically, the next step really is about expanding our pool of data and our functions um so that you know we keep getting better and better um at this and the more we do the more data we have the more refined we can be the more precise we are with all of our actions um you know we're always being expected to again look after the public purse and do more for less and i think this is certainly in in our cloud journey and, and cloud first by design which is where we are now um is helping us to be future-proofed. So for us, it's very much an investment. And I see now that we have got it embedded in operational policing. For me, this is the start of our journey, not the end. So it's really exciting to see where we can go from here. Exciting times indeed. Thank you so much, Helen and Matthew, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And you are watching The Cube. Stay tuned for more of The Cube's coverage of the AWS reInvent Accenture Executive Summit. I'm Rebecca Knight.